How much memory you got left on that stick there, honey? <laughs> Oh God. Uh, certainly in the past. Obviously when you're a teenager, you have just like the worst experience ever with your body and you'll never admit it until you're older. I had terrible skin. Um, I had big thick glasses. I had a birth defect when I was uh, born. My mouth was actually too big. I used to have these two um, like moles on my back. Like just like beauty marks, but um, I would never go to a pool and take off my shirt for that exact reason. I would say my teeth, um, my lack of hair. My hair started to fall out, we were very young, and if you look at the men in my family, that shouldn't have surprised anyone. I tried to wear uh, pink flamingo ties and bright green suspenders, ironically, but it was looking back just sort of sad. Got big ears. I think I still do. I looked in the mirror this morning. I'm a Sikh, obviously, uh, and, uh, and as such, in Canada, I stand out quite visibly uh, from my physical appearance. I grew up uh, like as the only Asian kid in my neighborhood. Growing up in a very white town and being very visibly not white meant that you were made aware of that at all times. There weren't many men of color on television. You knew that you never really fit in and that you wouldn't ever really fit in. Maybe my height. <laughs> a lot of people of power tend to be taller and um, I'm often not maybe not the shortest, but certainly not one of the tallest in the, in the boardroom. Well, since my metabolism shut down after 35. <laughs> the view that gay men have of each other is the uh, um, 10 out of 10 magazine model. I don't have a lot of muscle mass, I hunch a lot. I've always been skinnier than a lot of the, the, my friends and colleagues. I just wasn't very strong or like I was very slight. Part of this idea of manhood is, is, is being able, you know, being able to handle problems and part of that means being physically able. I've always been a little overweight uh, since I was a teenager. I don't have a six pack anymore. Then I go, I don't know if men are supposed to look like this. Your body always has to look the same shape and size. It's got to be perfect all of the time. Which is probably why I spent a lot of time uh, in the gym and, and playing a lot of sports. But I think even when I was sort of lamenting these things, I always knew how lucky I was because the, the guys had a much easier go than any of the girls in my school that had even the slightest physical imperfection. I think when I hit like 27 is when I was like, fuck all that bullshit. And that's roughly when, when I started doing drag too. So then being basically naked on stage just does not freak me out anymore. Because I'm trans, uh, there's a lot of dysphoria. The real man was supposed to be, you know, big and muscular and, and look a lot more like Arnie Hammer than, than me. So that's been a whole, a whole journey into finding out how, who I'm modeling myself after and what like, kind of man I'd like to be. For the longest time, I felt super self-conscious about my, about my facial hair. And that was because I couldn't grow any. I try to grow a good beard, but it's not, I guess, not as thick as I would like. But, uh, you know, I, I, I still rock it anyway. I was sort of concentrating a lot of my identity on that. And so I felt very strongly um, about my inability to grow facial hair as some sort of correspondent with uh, me not being man enough. Hopefully someday everyone gets clarity on their body because it's the only one you got. These are the cards that you were given. This is what we, you know, were dealt and this is what you have to live with, so. I'm okay with it now. <laughs>